Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, then run it back. Run it up. Well, 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 happy Monday and welcome to our final week in studio. Guys, anybody want to, every day maybe we do a, a memory that will hold us over? Mm. Taylor, why don't you take off for Monday? I don't think we should do that. <laughs> I think that's a horrific You're the idea. worst person. But it is the last week of school. We should give one memory each. School yeah, right? Per person. Like Chandler, you start. You start. Quick the memory. The last Quick. memory is... My last uh, memory. Lasting <laughs> memory. Not last My memory. My lasting memory is me and Lou in October picking the Boston Celtics oh, to win a ball. Okay, well, there it is. And it just feels like it's their year. It's their time. And looky, that's, looky, that's, who feel like that. could possibly be right? They look pretty good. Uh, Sham Sharania, Stadium Insider. My name's Michelle Chandler. Lou Will. We are here. Let's get things started with a series that is, eh, it's a series. Uh, Boston's up 2 nothing in this one. Took care of business at home. 105-98 win last night. Drew Holiday, woohoo! 26 points, 11 rebounds. Jalen Brown, 21.7 assists. Oh, Luka Doncic. He had 32, 11, and 11. It's his 10th playoff triple double. He's also the youngest player with a 30 point triple double in an NBA Finals. But all of that to get back to Drew Holiday. He was the player of the game, best player in this one. Were you surprised? I am not surprised at all. This is what he does. And it, you know what? He's just so consistent. No matter how his game is going on the offensive end, you know he's still going to bring it on the defensive end, right? He's taking on that challenge every single night. He can guard multiple positions from that point guard position just because he's so big and physical and strong. His length is obviously, you know, really bothering Kyrie Irving. Um, and on the offensive end, he doesn't ever force. He doesn't. He stays within his game. He's not one of these guys that's going to go and look for his. He plays within his offense. He knows how to play in that dunker spot as if he's a five man he knows how to play off these two stars he gets out in transition there's nothing he can't do and he plays within their offenses game which is huge he knows his role and he has mastered his role and and it's unbelievable they they he has arguably been their best player in this series him or Jalen Brown but just what he brings defensively when he gives you 26 points offensively that's just a cherry on top because he is so right? good on the defensive end it doesn't even matter half the nights on the offensive end and last night he was great. He was fishing 11 for 14, knocked down wide open threes. Um, it's special. Everything. There's a reason why Grant Hill is, is all over him to get him on that USA team is because of these type of performances and these type of games. How, how dare he be offensively great as well, Lou? I think we got <laughs> tricked into thinking that he was a one trick pony, right? yeah. that he was only somebody that can guard you know, elite defenders. I've, I've had the pleasure of playing with Drew, so I, I know what he's capable of doing on the offensive end. And also, he's played on teams in his, in his recent past, in the last four or five years, where they've had elite scores. So where he can go out and he can concentrate on the defensive end and he can be that stopper that teams needed him to be. But I think Dallas forgot to guard him on the other end. They thought that his <laughs> impact was only on the defensive end, and he made him pay for it last night. How do you forget to guard him? Uh, Shams, your storyline, but like, is this the series where you thought it'd be? Well, about right? I think Chandler summed it up. This, this being the Celtics year, and either way this went, the, the, the championship or bust expectations that were on this team from the beginning, they understood it. Everyone knows it. It's the elephant in the room. Like, if they don't win a championship, every team in the league is looking at the Celtics because of how much money they have tied up between Drew Holiday, Derek White coming up, who's going to get an extension nice. himself. Jason Tatum is, is eligible for a Supermax coming up. Jalen Brown, obviously the richest player in NBA, in, in, in NBA history as of right now. And then you have Chris Porzingis also signing an extension. That's a lot of money tied up for a team. You have to win under those circumstances. And if they didn't get the job done, obviously a lot of questions would have been asked. Is this team going to stay together? What do they do? But the run that they're on right now, obviously now they're up 2-0. You think about the success they've had with Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. Eight seasons for Jalen Brown there. Three conference finals, two, uh, four conference finals, two NBA finals. Three conference finals for Jason Tatum, two NBA finals. They've won at a high level every year, and now it's their chance. And you have to give Brad Stevens a lot of credit. Getting Porzingis and Drew Holiday last offseason, that completely changed the entire tenor. They lose Marcus Smart. Everyone thought they took a step back. That's their leader. That's a guy that brought a lot of veteran toughness defensive-mindedness, but you get Drew Holiday, it's every, everything changed for them. Still can't believe they got Drew Holiday. See, and I like this for me. The, the days of, like, the big three, like in Miami and now Phoenix, I, I'd rather the big two and then get three really good role players like KCP, like White, like Drew Holiday. Like in Denver, you have Murray and Jokic, but then you also have Gordon, KCP, and Porter. So I'm starting to think that mm. this format is the recipe for success where you have this more balanced attack, and then you fill in that sixth, seventh, eighth man with a Pritchard, with someone like with, with another player like that that can give you a little spark off the bench, but you're really dependent on this. And now everyone talked about early in the season, though, 
their depth. Are we going to be so concerned about that? They've been they've been blessed with health besides KC, uh, besides KP, and for the most part, that when the playoffs come, the rotation is shortened anyway. So when you have such a good seven, maybe eight on some yeah, nights, when they're consistent and they're productive, this this is going to be the new blueprint for the NBA. Their top five is so good, though. Like it's that unbelievable. Starting five. I it's, mean, it's maybe kind you, of, do, kind does of that gross. does that starting five rival the Warriors? It's kind of from. <laughs> What did you say? It's kind of gross. Like, yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's like everything's happening. It's yeah. I mean, the Warriors obviously they have the, the KD, KD stuff, Draymond, Steph, Clay. I feel like pack a different punch than these two. It does but, feel man, different. But. Defensively, yeah, like a uh, versatility and and with Drew Holiday, the, the, what he brings and and Derek White. He think about this. He's probably their fourth most valuable player, and he is probably the best role player in the NBA. And you have KCP, who's kind of up. Or, I mean, uh, I keep saying it's KCP, KP, who's been up and down. The um, you know hurt, banged up. He looked a little banged up in this yeah, game, but did. what he brings to versatility to their offense, it, it, it fits. So Brad Stevens did a great job of finding the right guys that fit and that are selfless and can give you know give into what the team wants to win. It's like Brad Stevens knows what he's doing, you guys. I think he's pretty good at that gig. Lou, we got two games under our belts. Finals MVP right now for you would be who? For me, it would be Jalen Brown. Um, I think he's been the most impactful. I think he's been steady throughout the these you know these last couple games. But you also can make a case for Drew Holiday. You can you can make a case for Drew with. The, you know, the offensive there you go. output that he put out last night and what he's doing on the defensive end and how he's been able to affect Kyrie Irving in this in this series, how he's been able to guard him and make things difficult. You know, Kyrie is struggling on the offensive end because of Drew Holiday, and that's allowing the, the, the court to open up for Jalen Brown, but that's a testament to who this team is. You know, another game where they have five guys in W figures, everybody doing their thing. So you can make a case for Drew Holiday, but obviously it's going to be Jalen Brown, the way that he's playing and everything. Those odds are crazy. How is Tatum still the favorite right now? Because y'all have been brainwashed, that's why. The world has been brainwashed yeah, to say Jason Tatum. These the numbers the don't lie, and he has been pretty inefficient. He is doing other things, I will say. As much as his shot isn't sure. falling down. He had 12 dimes last night. He's Nine still rebounding rebound. the ball. Like he, he's, still, he's still doing a lot of superstar-type things. He's just struggling offensively, getting his shot, getting his rhythm. But... When you look at those odds, I would take Drew Holiday plus 700. He's I mean, I, I would, yeah. <clears throat> His value, what he's doing, and the way they're guarding him, where they're kind of the way they're, where they're getting the ball out of Tatum Brown's hands, and, and Drew Holiday just find himself in the dunker or wide open threes. <laughs> He continues to make that. Those plus 700 odds are nuts. Yeah, I like that. If I could, I would put some money on that, ladies and gentlemen. Um, prior to game two, Jason Kidd playing the mental games. We see you. Uh, saying J Jalen Brown is the Celtics' best player, and Drew Holiday said that Kidd's not lying. I thought that was interesting, by the way. Um, look, I, I, this is nothing more than sort of mental gamesmanship. But the fact that Holiday then was like, yeah, no, there's no lie there. That was interesting. I will say Holiday's response was <clears throat> interesting because 90% <clears throat> of, I think, the people before this series would say Jason Tatum is the best player in the Boston Celtics. And I still think most of them would say that. Jalen Brown has showed now he is an elite two-way player and basketball is just not about scoring the game has evolved so much that you have to be able to do both I think that's why America and fans have been infatuated with Anthony Edwards because he does it uh -huh. on both ends of the floor Luca can score but people are talking about you know Anthony Edwards he's got SGA these guys that do it on both ends of the floor because that's what they need to see a guy like Wimby who is defensive player of the year runner-up but also gets buckets also can that is what people like so I think this is just kind of a, a you know a silly topic and so, some sort of a distraction ploy <laughs> that Jason Kidd brought up and Shaq said it something. didn't work. Sha yeah, Shaq said <laughs> something brilliant last night to, to Jalen Brown after the game. He said, "Don't get caught up in useless titles. Like when you have this much success, who cares at the end of the day, right?" True. And what I would say about Jalen Brown is, "Who's better, me or, t me or Tatum? Who's, the Boston Celtics are better than Dallas Mavericks, and Fair. we're going to win a championship against you. So it doesn't matter if he's the best player. I'm the best player. Drew Holiday could be the best player of this series and win. That means nothing because it's a team game, and all of them have to be good to have success, which they have. So." Who really cares? And also, if you're Jason Kidd, why would you take the chance and piss off Jason Tatum? You know, you maybe say, he doesn't find it like it would. I mean, listen, Jalen Brown has been the best player for two games. You still got two more to go. If Jason Tatum decides to wake up and be clear, basketball is you don't have to score the basketball to have an impact on the game. He's struggling on the offensive end. Give fair. granted, that's a that's a fair criticism, right? But look at the plays that he was making last night. He made a conscious effort to make plays for his teammates, get on the glass, sit down and defend. And at some point, 
some of these bunnies that he's missing, these layups and some of these threes, those are the shots that's made him special, has made him who he is and why we even respect Jason Tatum. The moment that that wakes up to go along with his playmaking ability, you might run into the best player that you tried to say that he wasn't. So listen, these guys are like we always said, they're 1A and 1B, it can go either way. Jason Tatum is due for a big game, so why even wake him up? And even with his offensive struggles, I don't think Dallas is going to like make Jason Tatum beat you game three. He is proven. He is respected. Dallas knows what he's capable of, and he has the well, they, he has they thought, attention. They thought they were going to make Drew Holiday beat him. <laughs> right, but my point is they're not going to just not guard Jason Tatum next game because no. he's not shooting the ball well. He can still go and dominate a game, and he's probably going to have one of these games where he erupts and goes and gets 40 and and because that is how good he is. But... At the end of the day, this is the best team. They've been the best team all year long, and it doesn't matter who's 1A, 1B, 1C, because they have the best starting five, and that's all that matters. Who cares at the end of the day who's the best player? No, it's like it's a great team. I, I thought the Drew Holiday agreeing was just the Drew Holiday that's, agreeing that was, was weird. I because he agreed. He didn't he didn't right. say he didn't say ah who, he didn't say what I'm saying. Oh, who cares? Oh, we're a team. Yeah, I know he agreed. He literally said I, I don't disagree with him, which was a little shock. I mean, I do I love Drew Holiday? I think I he did really. clarify last night though and said I would take both. I wasn't picking one or the other. That's I would take. We're gonna both. take his first answer. But, yeah, we're taking the first answer. That was the gut answer. I but. would take if I had to pick right now. If I had to start with one of them, I'm starting with Jason Tatum. Like I, I'm I, I, I'm, I mean, it could change. But I get right now, if you have a pick to start your t season next year, I'm taking Jason Tatum. For the regular season? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do you want to switch when the postseason rolls? Am I allowed to? No. <laughs> no, then I'll, stick with, then I'll stick with Tatum. I'm just saying, it's, it's not that, that far off. It's not outrageous. It's not. Like, I, I do this because it's, it's I think not like it's egregious funny, to say Jalen Brown's not, better, but like, I still think people think Jason Tatum's better. The, those odds were, I thought, interesting, though. I hadn't even noticed it until you said something. I was like, oh, that's kind of weird that they're still Well, those are that. weird because it's just the production's just not sticking. there. Yeah. The, numbers are, the numbers are wrong. And they're fluid. They're supposed to be fluid numbers. But, yeah. Um, we got to spend some time talking about Dallas here for a second because Luca, uh, before this one, was questionable. I just assumed it was the same list of injuries, but it was a thoracic contusion. That was a new one. Plus, you got the right knee sprain, the left ankle soreness. Um, he took the blame for the loss after the game. He did have eight turnovers. And four. The free throws were pissing me off last night, but he had four missed of those. Uh, Lou, should he be blaming himself? Because he also had a lot of points. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't mind it. You can, blame your, you can blame yourself. You guys are down 0 2. I think this is more about the Boston Celtics than it is Dallas Mavericks. Agreed. I just think they're outmatched right now. You know, these two games have shown it. Dallas has been great throughout the course of this season, they've played really good basketball. We've talked about the matchups that they've had, the teams that they've played in, in the playoffs leading up to this matchup, but they hadn't ran into a Drew Holiday, mm -hmm. a Derek White, a Jalen Brown, and a Jason Tatum, and a Porzingis at the rim, and how the, uh, how the Boston Celtics are guarding them right now. They're making everything difficult. They're winning the 50-50 game. They're winning the hustle game. They're picking up full court. They look like they just wanted more. They're the more hungry team. So you can, these guys can go down the line and blame whoever they want. I just think they're outmatched. Yeah, I think when you're the best player on the team, a lot of blame does fall on you. Sure. And eight turnovers is is not good. Those are those are possessions that they need. And we said before the season started, the Dallas Mavericks have to be elite. They have to be dialed. They have to be so balanced. And when you shoot free throws the way they shot, you're not going to win games against the Boston. When you turn the ball over this much and allow that team to get out in transition, you're not going to win a lot of games. And, and when your second best player, Kyrie Irving, is having the woes that he's having on the offensive end, that also plays a huge factor. And we talked about the other guys. Are they going to make shots? It's P.J. Washington, he had somewhat of a good game last night, but he was one for five from three. Uh, the bigs, have they kind of took out those lobs in the beginning and then in game one. So the, you have to credit the Boston Celtics for how they've game planned this series, how they've taken away what the Dallas Mavericks do great. And that's corner threes and that's pick and roll lobs. And the Celtics have completely eliminated those two things. So Luka, at the end of the day, he's so good. He's still going to have these gaudy numbers. He's still going to control the game. He's still going to run their offense. Eight turnovers is a lot, but he's not to blame for their struggle in this series so far. That was, that's a laundry list of injuries, especially when your team is down 0-2 at this point, Shams. Are we looking at a possibility of him missing anything? There's no scenario where Luka Doncic is going to be sitting these games. <laughs> I mean, he, yeah, he's been dealing with knee stuff and ankle stuff, but this is stuff that everyone on the Mavs, from coaches to players, they all expect him to play through. You're not sitting in the NBA Finals for, for, for what he's dealing with right now. But again, guys are going to be banged up right now. He's going to be playing through things. He had the chest issue, uh, whatever that was with the sternum area, obviously coming off game one. But there, there's no scenario here where, where Luka Doncic is going to sit in any of these games. K what is that, K-tape? He's just covered in it. Kinesio. Is that what it is? Kine that's what it stands for? Yeah. Oh, look at you. 
I spent my some time in the, I spent some time in the training room. <laughs> the K tape. That's no, fun. No way around some K tape. No, I would think him sitting out would. Well, He's not sitting out. There's, there's no, no chance. chance. There's no chance. Um, they did have a chance to get it down to a possession at one point with 50 seconds left in this game. And yes, J Kid does think this moment is a foul. Uh, but Derek White had a. He's just. I'm happy for Derek White, but that's a monster moment on PJ Washington. It. He also finished with 18. First, foul or not? No, no, and I don't even. They gave the block to White, not Brown. But this is like a, this is who they are. This is these are the type of plays that Boston Celtics have been making all year long. And this is just straight effort. You watch Derek White. He started from one end to the other, completely God. sprinted, did not stop, never gave up on a play. And th these are the type of plays that win you championships and that win you games. These are all effort. This is all energy. And this is what Derek White brings, no matter what, if his shot is going down or not. He's still going to bring you this energy. He blocks so many shots for a guard. So this is just an unbelievable. This reminds you of the, you know, LeBron. Like a team team. The, yeah, this a reminds you of the block. This is one of those plays where you will look back and be like, damn, that was a huge pivotal moment in this series. It feels like I see Derek White in, this, in the crowd at least once a game with a hustle play, trying <laughs> yes. to save the basketball or just making a hustle play. This has been who he's been. He's, he's, this is how he plays. And again, over and over, we keep talking about Drew Holiday, but Derek White is also one of those guys. If Drew Holiday needs a breather, you can throw him on a Kyrie. You can throw him on a Luka, switch out. And junk defenses, right? Like, Dallas saw a lot of trapping. They saw a lot of different things. Boston doesn't have to do that. They got one through five guys that can guard one-on-one, -on -one, and that makes everything difficult. Like Chandler just said, the lob looks are taken away. Like, they got one and it was celebrated. I think it was in, like, the third quarter by the time. <laughs> oh, they, right, yeah. Yeah, it was in, like, the third quarter by the time they got their first lob. And it was like, there's their first opportunity to get something going at the rim. Like, Derek White is one of those guys that just does all the small things, does all the intangibles that give you an opportunity to win basketball It's true. Ba basketball, it's pretty self-explanatory. You try and get two on the ball and you make the extra pass and play itself. The, 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 Dallas Mavericks can't get two on the ball because the individual defenders on the Celtics are so good where one through five, they're staying in front, they're playing physical, their length is giving them issues, they can switch, they can blitz, they can front the post and come over. They have the, the, the athleticism to scramble if they get out and they do want to double team look. So they have every single coverage possible on that end. So. Dallas is very good offensively, but when you see this, these type of matchups, and we said this before the series started, one through five, they match up really, really well on both ends of the floor. So this is, it's not necessarily how bad Dallas has been. It's, it's how impressive and how good Boston's been on both ends of the floor. Yeah, I think that's the thing is I don't feel like, well, we could talk Kyrie here as well because he hasn't been great, but you're also mentioning all the reasons why he can't possibly get out. He's got 28 points, 10 of 37 from the field. Over eight from three, that is. But even him, his, his looks are good. Like, I can't sit here and be like, ah, oh, they're, they're taking him completely out of his game. He's not getting to his spots. He is. He's that. He, Kyrie Irving is, is just as good offensively as Drew Holiday is defensively. It is just saying he is just, he's going through a slump right now, whatever it is. And it, I, we can credit it to Drew Holiday as well because he is so physical and he is so good. And he, he does beat him to certain spots. But Damn. It, it, Kyrie Irving is getting good looks. So if you're him, you have to stay confident. You have to assume <laughs> These are going to start falling at home. And again, we like to do this. They're down 2 0. We did this before where it's over. This it feels for different. Some reason, this time, it does Charlie. feel slightly it's different. It feels slightly different. Feels I'm just hopeless. tripping on how we're still talking about Jason Tatum struggling, but he's up 2 0. But yeah, he's struggling. If they, imagine if he wasn't struggling. Nine. I guess it would still be 2 0, but it would be a, loud, be a louder. It'd be a louder 2 0. <laughs> But the Kyrie but, of it, oh, look, obviously the spotlight was on him. He's going into hostile territory. You, you kind of had hoped he would come out, at least have one of these games be a monster. I will game. say, I thought it would go the other way. I thought he would come out and yeah. have 50 balls. I mean, he's trying. Because, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, he's getting them up. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. about to say, he's trying. It's, 10, it's not a lack of effort. I'm trying, Jennifer. Yeah, 30, 37 <laughs> shots in two games. That's a that's a lot. He's just, he's getting a lot of different looks on the defensive end. He's, he's running the guys that are motivated, that want to guard him. Like, that's the difference, right? Sometimes you play a team that you're guarded by a guy that has to guard you just based on positions. These guys want to guard him. Like, they're waking up and saying, I'll take, I'll take that matchup. Man. And he's looking at at least three different guys who are excited to guard him, who look forward to making it difficult for him. That's the problem that he's, that he's running into in this series, that 
When you're done with Drew Holiday, Jason Jalen Brown can guard you. When you're done with him, Derek White wants to guard you. And even if you switch off, Jason Tatum wants to guard you. And when you're done with all of that, for your finishes at the rim, you got a seven-one guy yeah. who's who, I who's mean, who's he blocked him in game one. Around. Exactly. Yeah. So on a jumper. it's not a lack of effort that he's trying to go out and get one of these monster games and one of these two games in Boston just hadn't went his way. See, the difference is, as you guys have mentioned, that he they can't afford that, right? Whereas the Tatum of it all, and yes, we do talk about he's struggling offensively, 12 of 38 from shooting in the series. Um, and if you go through numbers, which I've heard ad nauseum over the weekend on the different shows, of what he does in, in these moments, but they can afford it, right? Like, if they go to Dallas and he has two more of these types of games, well, it yeah, doesn't mean anything. Dallas can't afford it because P.J. Washington, Derek Jones, these guys, they don't create their own shots. They don't do what these other guys do on the Boston Celtics, right? They have to have Luka do his thing, get involved, find, get two on the ball, <clears throat> and swing, swing, and get them get them open looks. <laughs> the, the Celtics have a luxury where they are so good, they're so versatile, they, the way they play, everybody has a chance to attack. The ball is in Kyrie and Luka Doncic's hand for the map. So it's not like, you know, Kleber and Lively. These guys don't create their own shot. So it is tough when you have a defensive team like the Boston Celtics that are just can guard you one-on-one -on -one, like we talked about. When you don't have to put two on the ball, that kind of eliminates everything good Dallas does offensively. That is all Luka does is plays at his pace, gets you in the paint, makes the defense collapse, and you can see over everybody and find the open look. Either when they do do that, they're not making the shots, and half the time they don't have to do that, so they're not put in the scramble situation. So you have to credit Boston's defense, but on the same time, the, the, the Mavs offensively, they, they don't have many other guys to create other than like a Jaden Hardy off the bench who's not been successful either. Man, this does not look good. Um, Christophs Porzingis, though, had a moment last night where it did not look right and then continued to do so through the game. Uh, do we have any updates? Is there a concern about this? Well, he's going to get testing today, but, I mean, everyone after the game, Christophs Porzingis and even Joe Mazzullo said there's no concern. He aggravated it. didn't look like he really strained it that bad, but, I mean, he's, he's expecting to play on it, obviously. Um, he tweaked his ankle last week at a workout, too, so you're dealing with a calf. Tweaked his ankle. Wasn't a big deal. He played through it, and, and I would expect him... Uh, unless there's something major that shows up. He's, he's going to try to play on that. Well, his direct quote is, uh, <laughs> he is playing, I will die out there. <laughs> very, very uh, dramatic. As good as the Celtics are playing, I think they could sit Przingis game three and four and still win this series. That's like, not I, good. You know what I mean? I don't, I, they're, they are being what, so... I mean, what are you saving them for? Uh, no, but I'm saying, I don't, I don't think that this is obviously critical and his point. game one was insane, but I'm just saying the Boston Celtics are on another level right now. They really are. Um, that next game is on Wednesday. Go, oh, that's like, I love the schedule. Well done, NBA. Um, yes, Wednesday will be game three in Dallas. But over the weekend, there were other basketball stories making the rounds, and the Caitlin Clark drama never ends. Scoop time. Not on the Olympic roster for Paris. Uh, <laughs> what other details can you give us? Yeah, we should hopefully have the full team here. Of uh, you know, That's the big news, right? The 12 women that made this roster, led by Asia Wilson, Brianna Stewart, uh, Diana Taurasi. The, like, look at this group. This is a supremely talented group. The U.S. women have won gold every Olympic since 1996. And this roster obviously is prepped and primed to do so again this year. But yeah, no Caitlin Clark. I'm told Caitlin Clark and Brianna Jones of Connecticut are top the alternates list hmm. for Team USA if there is needed uh, to be a replacement. But this is a supremely talented roster. I definitely think we have to keep the focus on the on the girl uh, on the women that made the team. But obviously, people will talk about Caitlin yes. Clark not being on the team. She missed their 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 training camp uh, a couple months ago, obviously with the NCAA Final Four. This I, I woke up to a shit storm, if you will. Who would you re who would you replace? Exactly. Them with? <clears throat> That's a hell of a squad. That, that's, that, like, that should be, that should be the story. That should so be the what, story. what is the argument? You take Diana Taurasi off because this is what her like sixth. Olympic team. There is no something. argument. I mean, the story is there's a lot of girls argument. that probably felt they were snubbed that aren't as famous as Caitlin Women, Clark. Bro. A lot of women that have felt like they were snubbed just more than more than her. So. By the way, I've been doing that too, Lou, in, yeah, in honor of Lou. I call, I call thing, myself I you know, I call, I call my brother. You know what the problem is? Thing. I was thinking about it. Because we can say guys, and there is no equivalent. It's like girls, ladies, women. Where well, we like I guys, dudes, boys. men, boys, and like, but we don't say boys. We say guys. Well, we get offended if a if a guy calls us a boy. It's a thing. Yeah, I don't. I, yeah. Calling a man a boy just feels yeah. very. My weird point me. is, okay. the, this group of women is going to go and dominate and win gold. That should 100%. be the story. They're like not, seventy-nine not, and three in four, twenty yeah, years. Yeah, they're going to absolutely dominate the field. So that should be the story of this list of women that are 
does all deserve to there be on go. there. And now is, Caitlin, is there an argument that yes, we, should we have put her on there to get more eyes to continue to, maybe, but there's also other women that have had better statistical seasons that deserve to be on this team just as much as Caitlin Clark, regardless Arike of- Enrique Wale. <laughs> stud. She should probably be, feel the most snubbed, in my opinion. Probably. Absolutely. So that, that, that to me is a story. Again, can we say, oh, well, now not as many people are going to watch? Fine. If that's what it is, fine. This is a global sport. The way this team is still set up. This is a global sport. Built to win a gold. A global this event. We will have just enough people to watch this basketball game. Listen, if you look <laughs> at this, it's nobody that she will replace on this list. Will she have a, 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 an immaculate career yes. for years ahead? Absolutely. Right now, these women are playing better basketball. Can I say this, though? The way she handled it, I would not have handled it that way because she has been nothing but classy oh, and, were... and elegant. And the way she just, oh, this is just motivation. You would not have been classy or elegant? Yeah, no. we, we know. But I'm just saying, she could have easily been bitter. She could have easily said this, that. She said, no, you know what? Four years from now, that's my dream to play there. Maybe I'll be there in four years. At least there's so no many. disappointment. There's no bitterness from her end. Yeah, because what is she, 22? Right so you got 26, 30, 34. She, she's she's, she's going to be on the next one. She's, was it 2028 in L.A.? She'll be there. going to be all right. I, I just, I think where I my uncomfortable um, status is right now is this is being used as a pawn. And y'all aren't that sneaky, by the way, some of you out there, Nikki Haley's of the world, who Dang. all of a sudden have an interest in well, Caitlin Clark and women's basketball. Has Nikki Haley watched one possession? No, you've really never watched a game in your life, I'd, <laughs> I'd venture to say. And also, uh, I believe we were told many, many years in this business to stick to sports. I would politely like to say stick to politics. Because using this poor girl as a, and I will say girl in this because she's a kid, as a pawn in what is now turning into an argument that's not even about basketball anymore, it's gross and it's transparent. Go off, I'm Beetle. I'm seeing Beetle. a lot of it. Uh, oh, shut up. Okay, we're gonna take I'm a all for quick Beetle. break. Go. It's just gross. Um, another edition of you buying that when we come back. Why did you point to him? Because he's you? gonna buy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Do this segment with Chandler's gonna be buying. <laughs> You buying that? The victim. Fine, I'll go to Lou first, Shams, but you're on standby, so just wait. Uh, Lou, this is a good one. Markeith Morris says Giannis Antetokounmpo would still be ringless if he hadn't injured. If they, wow, Kyrie Irving in the 2021 playoffs. What? I had to read that again. So Giannis <laughs> would not have a ring if Kyrie hadn't been injured in the 2021 playoffs. Are you buying that? I'm not buying it, but I, I also understand where, where Smooth is coming from. You know, he was he was a part of that, and he felt like he had an opportunity with, with Kyrie, and, you know, things happened in this game. But, you know, they went on to win, you know, three more series to win a championship <laughs> after that. So, nah, I ain't buying it. That just, that's a big statement. When are these, like, going to stop? Never. Like, when are these going to, like, these hypothetical what-ifs that we'll never find out? No way. This is like this is what this whole business is. This is, is just like I can't even I don't know. I'm not buying this. this you not, think Kyrie would even agree with this? It, no, it doesn't matter. Like even if he does, if he doesn't, it's just like it's just a silly argument. I don't love this one. Um, so we're not buying that. Okay. No, got we're it. not buying that. Uh, Chandler, well, you're up next. Lonzo Ball said that Victor Wimanyama might be the best defensive player we've ever seen. And he has a chance to be the best player ever, potentially. You buying that? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you buy it or not? So I think I'm buying it. I think, I think I'm buying it defensively for sure, with his length, with his with his instincts, with his skill, with, with his already how he impacts the game on that end of the floor. Yes. Now to say he's the best player ever after one season with his youth and his whole career ahead of him, where we don't know what's gonna happen with you know his health and everything like that. That is impossible for me to say. But if there's one person that's currently playing or that I've heard about that could possibly do it. It's Victor Wimbanyama. So, yeah, I guess I'm buying it, but I'm not putting a bunch of money into it. I put like a couple bucks on it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you buy it, you buy it. You yeah, pay the price. I'm just saying it depends on the you. price tag that for me to buy it, but yeah, I'm buying it. You just it. bought it. You bought it. <laughs> It was on sale. You just bought, bought it. But like the best player ever. I know he's great. You I know he can be great. It. It, are it's you, just, are you buying it or not? I'm buying he's it. He's buying uh, it no matter no what. No matter what the price. Doesn't matter. I'm buying it. <laughs> Lou, you got another good one here. He better not suck next year. Is Why all would I'm he saying. suck next he, year? He, he, he can't. <laughs> he's so young. He doesn't even have like any scars. He's like, not he's actually back there. You don't no, suck. look at it. It's a baby. <laughs> um... Rumors are that the Pistons, and it's crazy to have a Pistons story here in June, but here we are, are going to offer Cade Cunningham a five-year, $226 million Can I take this extension. Yeah, I'm going to just say this briefly. Uh, I'm not buying it. <laughs> I, I hate to count anybody's money. I don't, I don't pocket watch. Right. 
Um, I want I want Kay Cunningham to make as much money as he possibly can from the game of basketball, but I'm Damn. not buying this. Go ahead, Chandler. Good. I am buying it if it was my own money, because who the fuck <laughs> else are they going to pay? Who are they going to get that's better than Cade Cunningham? Who are they going to draft that's going to become like it is? There, no one's going to Detroit in free agency. They're not getting I so just unless answered the question. So unless it's via <laughs> trade, unless it's via trade, which I don't even know what trade assets they have to get a player of Cade Cunningham's caliber back. Yes, I am paying him $326 million if I have Damn. to because he is the best option that they could possibly get. And he's a stud. He Look is an absolute stud. how much they've aged him. In, he's 22. And his agent, James Dunleavy, is going to get him this bag. Whether we want it to buy or not, it's going to happen because he's that good and he is the best lot. they are going to get. That is a horrible way to go to bed at night. Like, I'm the best they're going to get. Like, that's just not a... Positive. I mean, I don't, you don't hear any like Paul George going to the Pistons. You don't hear like these big <laughs> names just looking Maybe at not. the Pistons this summer. So I, yeah, I'm paying him, and I'm at least locking in this guy that I could possibly <laughs> pair with somebody else in the future. Pay that man his money, Lou. He's he's aging presidentially. He's also dead. Now. He's like a six seven point guard. He just never gets talked about. I would, I would like to see a little return on my you investment. Know, exactly. You got a coach. You're paying a well, zillion dollars. Well, then you fill out the rest of the roster because it ain't his fault. Well, I do agree I, with that. The roster stinks. I guess you're Kate, right. You the roster stinks. Cade Cunningham does not stink. I agree. Whew, that's a long They're time. They're paying their there. coach $17 million a year. Go off, man. I'm just I'm saying. Just he's, here, he's, yes. Yes. So I'm buying it. All right. I don't Chandler care the price. I'm buying this, this more than Wimby is you the greatest a, of all time. Wow. Okay. That, all right. You're in a buy-in mood, and I like it. Uh, Chandler, Josh Hart believes. Oh, I got to go again. Good God. Yeah. yeah well, you interrupted <laughs> the last one. Drink a lot of um, he thinks that more than 30 3-0. NBA oh, players like could make an NFL roster. I like this one. I like this one. <laughs> Let me take this one. All right, take Hell it. Hell yeah, 30 NBA <laughs> players could play in the NFL. Let's go. Let's read. Let's get this argument back Fine. going. Let's go. It's funny that we're still talking about this. I, yeah, I Just think, 30? Forever. I think Josh Hart, <laughs> if he, again, how much time do we get to train for this? I don't, like a Is realistic like amount. Rig it up? We, not let's year, not rig it up. If we had to wake up and go. You I'll tell you this. You think your cardio's ready, right? I'll tell you this. There's more NBA players that could play in the NFL right now than there's NFL players that could play in the NBA right now. Whether that's one game, one season, whatever it may be, there is more NBA players right now with their athleticism, with their cardio, their conditioning, their yep. skill set. Yes, are they going to get hurt probably more likely? Fine. But I'm talking if it's a one game thing, <laughs> I'm just saying if it's a one game thing, yes, I think there's more players in the NBA that can go that way than NFL players that can go this way. No doubt in my mind. We're all buying this? You had an espresso shot today, didn't you? Double. You did, did yeah, it? I'm not you? even sweating. That's how you know I'm oh, on fire. I don't, Give me the next one, too. Go. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> no, this one goes to Lou. <laughs> Wait, Shams, is everything good so far? We're just watching. Okay, perfect. John, what are you, you can talk, <laughs> you can talk about that. We've seen some aggressive uh, aggressiveness from Chandler some early. My point talk. is, there's this early the skill this is different. Give Chandler the rock today. Go, yeah. Chandler. Feed me. All right, <laughs> here go, we go. Chandler. Paul Pierce. There has to be a Paul Pierce one in here. He said this is going to be LeBron's last year playing. No, he's wrong. I'm not buying that. <laughs> okay, we're not buying this one. No chance. If, no, you watch, we, if you watch running back, you would know. We also we haven't gotten the heads up, and he's you know he's giving not, us a year. Yeah. You know what? He's I'm, about to get a huge another deal, and you think he's just not going to play? And he's talked about for the last, I don't know, five years that he wants to play with Bronny. So now all of a sudden he has that chance. He has a free agency coming up, and he's just going to retire. This makes no sense. I'm not buying it. I'm buying it. What? There we go. I'm you buying it. You are out of control. I'm buying it because the Lakers... Um, probably will draft Bronny with one of their three picks. 100% happen. That's going to feed the beast where he wanted to play with his son. His body is already kind of aching and wearing down. I think he can play another two years, but he's also said he's looking at this from year to year. So. Okay, but Lou, you, you do know we're talking about this man right here who's going to give us a long uh, heads up so that every stop on that schedule will be a party for him, a farewell But I've, I've seen this movie before. I played with Kobe in this last year. He started that season off dead serious. He was he was prepared to compete, realized that his body wasn't going to give him everything that he wanted, and it turned into a farewell tour. So, uh, No, I don't. I think he's I'm built agree. differently. Yeah, I think he and wants I also up. think he's, he's going to get it. He's, he's so he's, he's good gonna, he's gonna So get before it. the season starts, he's going to be like, you know what, guys? This no, that's what you don't have. It doesn't have to be before the season. You know what You know what your body is going to give you and whatnot. Like we, we were 10 to 12 games in before it mm. turned into a farewell tour for Kobe. It didn't start the season that way. This, when it's his last season, it will be on record. We oh, will God, cut yeah. for There'll it. Be It'll a, happen a celebration. in the summer. He, it, yeah. It'll be an hour-long special announcing It'll that the next It'll be a documentary on it. be clear, well-deserved. 
Sure, I yeah, guess. Yeah, and I'll watch. I'll probably watch every single one of his games because it's well you're deserved. Well deserved. Eighty-two games. But uh, this you're going to watch. Definitely road games. Of LeBron's 40, final season. Road games. You are such a liar. Did you not tune in to Kobe's? Every single one. Okay. Did you not? No, I did not. I was there. Because there are other games I also I have to, to watch. I had to. I was there. I'm just saying. I think yeah, he's. I think he's too. Yeah, you were literally there. <laughs> I think he's too good still. Like I think he's too healthy. Still. I agree. Why? Why would he stop playing? It's, he's he's still an animal. I it's will just say all this. NBA. 2026 All Star Weekend is in LA. So he announces it then, then the following season. Don't you just fucking drop season? a little crumb. <laughs> I've just... already said it. He's a, I would expect him to play up to two more seasons. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, Lou, I think you're out on this one. No, I, he can play up to two years, but I wouldn't oh, be surprised. I mean, he I can play, play up four to four years. Yeah, yeah, he but I he's a freak. I, w- I wouldn't be surprised if this season started and it's going however way, and he said, you know what, I had enough. I'd be I would shocked. bet my entire Me net too. worth that that does not happen. I'm going to bet Chandler's entire net worth that, <laughs> that is gonna, not going to happen. There's no way that's happening <laughs> for Please. multiple reasons. No, I agree. I'm 100% with you. Lou, you're adorable. Uh, <laughs> Chandler, you're up next. Jack. I'm, I'm not a LeBron conspiracy theorist guy. Either. Well, I'm not either. I'm just I'm going Only off will. of what Only I've will. seen. I hope will. it's not. I, hope, I want him to keep playing. Well, also, if your kid gets there, you kind of want to, like, you know, the witch is happening. When his kid gets well, there. I mean, you're right. I used the wrong it's word. It's now. That's what I'm saying. It's right now. So what is he waiting for? It's not like he's still in high school. Like, he's in the NBA draft. This so is that the one year. season will quench his thirst. How many he's, how many is he gonna want? How many Two. does Bronny want? Bronny's gonna be like, Dad, man, you get the hell out of here, man. Like, he better Bronny's probably gonna Tuesday. want him to buzz off eventually. <laughs> you don't get that. to tell LeBron James to buzz off when. Look at all the ball. Look at look at all the, all the ball guys. When they, the, Did you say bald? I, I said the ball boys, <laughs> and, it, and it came off weird, so I, I said the ball guys. You can't but call them boys. At, you got to call them men. I said, call them guys. <laughs> but we look how they came in with, with their father. You know, he did his job all the way up to that point. Once they got there, they kind of right, told him. Like, I just LeBron figured James out who you were LeBron talking about. That's I was why like, I'm with the ball kids. The, no, like that's the, why I had to get the shoes and stuff. Okay, now we, we're on the same page. <laughs> okay, now now. But at, at some point, they, they become grown men, and they're like, Chill out. But we that is different. Where is LeBron? What makes Ball? it different? Why are you at, why do you summon him? Do you want him to show up? Well, now? I'd love to have him on the show this no, week. No, thank you. Uh, Shaq. <laughs> this is like an all-star of people saying stuff, by the way, Chandler. This is what we Ball have to do when there's stream. one game all No, week. we got people. We got people. Um, Shaq said he was not the best player on the team during his Lakers years, but that he was the most dominant. Hmm. Are you buying he means that? I think Shaq is the most, 2001 Shaq, in my opinion, is the most dominant player of all time. Like, if I could draft all years, all all players, I want that guy to start with. Because yeah, just because no you're, you're, you're it's just a walking double team, sometimes even triple team. And, yeah, he's the most dominant player. Obviously, this team with Kobe, game on the line, you're going to put the ball in Kobe's hand to create a shot, get to his mid-range, do things like that. But when you need a bucket throughout the flow of the game, yeah, you're going to your big fella. You hear he's the most dominating force probably in NBA history, let alone just yeah. on his Laker team. So, yeah, I can agree with that. I think there's different. There could be different terminologies, best or most dominant, but no doubt he was the most dominant. That, that feels factual. To yeah, me. I like this. Yeah, this I like is, that one. Sure, Kobe was the again. This is like the him best. saying to JB, create no. Who cares about these useless titles? Fine, Kobe can be the best player, but I was the most dominant. I like it. I like it too. Even though it's pretty much the same thing. Although, who is that in the Tatum Brown <laughs> discussion? I think we're going to break. Oh, yeah, you're right. I don't want to get in trouble. Uh, we're going to take some off season outlooks at teams that have been eliminated from these playoffs mm. as we get prepared for the off season when we come I haven't back. got to this page yet. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was going to be a wrap. You're running back, y'all, y'all. All right, the off-season outlook portion of the program has arrived. Uh, Taking a look at the future of some teams, and we're going to do it in the Western Conference, and we're going to start with the Thunder, Shams. You're going to start us off. Thunder. The the, the Thunder, I I would expect continued patience. I mean, we think about Chet Holmgren, Lou Dort, Josh Giddey, Shea Gillis Alexander. This core, this this was their first true playoff run together. I don't think anything dramatic. I I think they're going to take a patient approach. But teams around the league do think the Thunder will look into veteran centers. You think about the need for rebounding, the need for maybe a, a additional size at the five position. Hmm. That's the one area you could look at and definitively say, could the Thunder need a big potentially? Sam Presti spoke about it in his post game uh, or his postseason press conference. The fact that in some of those games down the stretch, you know, th- there was a, a thought around the league that obviously they, they might need rebounding. So we'll see what they end up doing. Okay. So there's a potential there for some. By the way, that was a postseason. He did a two and a half hour. That is insane to me, by the way. Um, any reaction to that 
as is, the idea of bringing in a veteran center. Yeah, that's what they need. I think that, that the longevity of Chet's career, I think, is dependent on getting someone like that. I think they need, like, an enforcer, bring in an Isaiah Stewart type where you don't have Whoa. to give the ball to, but just kind of a physical, rugged, big man that can provide them 15 to 20, 25 minutes on any given night. If they could have got a Daniel Gafford, something like that, that's a great lob threat, a rim runner that can play off these guards that you don't have to give the ball to, I think is exactly what you need. I saw some like Laurie Market and something like that. I'm like, isn't he very similar to I saw to him Chet? to the Spurs. I'm like, isn't he very similar? I'm like, I don't, so I don't love that. I think they have enough talent. I think they have enough skill, what they have already. They have a boatload of draft picks. They have so many assets that they can move around. So like Sean just said, I don't think they're in a rush to do anything because they're sitting so pretty, but I think definitely you got to get someone other than Biombo or Muscala, who, who, you know, they're, they're big as they had. They got to have some an impactful five man. A Capella would be amazing. Capella's they could somehow pull him off. Someone, someone like that. Do you trade uh, Lou Josh Giddy? I think you take a look at it. You know, late in games, Chandler just educated me late in games that he was getting benched a lot, really wasn't even playing those meaningful minutes. And you have, your, you have your guard play locked up. You have the guys that you're going to want on the court um, to end games. But also, he gives you a look. He gives you a playmaker. You know, so if I'm, if, I'm, if I'm Oklahoma City and I can take a look at some things and I can get something value, of value back, if I can turn that into um, a big that can give me a four or five, an, an enforcer-like type of guy, um, you take a look at it. But who knows? I know. It's kind of, they're in a great position. And the, again, this guy, he was out of the rotation. He was out of the starting lineup. So this is someone I think that was key to like kind of their movement early on and then how their offense, how he was being guarded with his lack of shooting ability just kind of literally got him out of the rotation. You see guys like Isaiah Joe put it in the starting right. lineup instead of him just because they can simply shoot the ball and space the floor and let SGA work. When you have a guy like Josh Giddy. It's kind of like it, 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 it kind of packs the paint. It doesn't allow J Dub, doesn't allow SGA to do what they do when you have him sitting there. So I, I do think if I can, I shop him. But again, they're in no rush. No rush. It's a lovely place to live. Uh, Shams the Kings, 46 36. They lost to the Pelicans in the play in. Their sixth man, Malik Monk, is a free agent. Whoa. What about their plans? The Kings can offer Monk up to four years, $78 million in a new contract. And they obviously want him back. They recognize his value for that team. He was one of the runner up for six man of the year award this year. So he, he what he's done in Sacramento alongside De'Aaron Fox, DeMontis Sabonis, he's made them a winner again, has helped contribute to that. And so they know that around Sabonis and Fox, they can bring in talent now to Sacramento. They have assets to do it. They have flexibility to do it. For the first time in a really long time, I think they're looked at as a team that some players could look at going uh, to. So I, I think they're going to continue to be aggressive with their assets and, and, and all the flexibility that they've built. They went after Pascal Siakam and OG Ananobi the last, year, last couple of years. They hmm. came close for, for at least one of them. Uh, we'll see who they go after again. Yeah, the Kings are interesting because I do love Malik Monk. Now at that price tag, how much do they value him? How much do they like him? But they have their dynamic duo going forward. I think they learned some things that Keon Ellis, no one expected him to be this good. He's now a keeper on this roster. So there are certain assets that they have. I just think even if you pay Malik Monk that money, which I think he, he deserves it, does that put them over the edge? Is that, it's, it's, it's not like they're adding anything to their right. current team. So I do think they need to keep him at all costs, but it's just basically bringing back the same team that didn't work this year. So they, they got to they gotta look maybe via trade or do something, but they're on the right path. It's just the Western Conference is stacked. Malik was one of the bright spots, though. You know, I, I keep Malik. My only concern would be... Um, being someone that's torn his ACL, you know, this is going to be a long road back. And he tore late in the season, you know. So he has recovery over the offseason. He's going to miss some basketball um, at the beginning well, of the season. Yeah, the MCL. I'm sorry. MCL. MCL. Same thing. They got to tear it all down, you know. So it's going to be a, a long road to recovery. It's going to be a little while before you see the version of Malik Monk that we've got accustomed to seeing how at the level that he's been able to play. He's going to get back to that form, but it's going to be a little while. So, you know, they got to make a decision there. But I say pay him, give him his money. Well, then, I, I kind of, the thing that Chandler said about it, but then this is really just the same team, and each time we get to a certain point in the year, it feels like they don't have enough to make that next step. So then who, who are you adding? Well, and what's tough is you look at the Western Conference, the Warriors, the Rockets, the Grizzlies, and the Spurs are all going to be better next year and those are all teams that are behind the Sacramento Kings so if they don't get that next guy if they don't uh, or do they try and move a Harrison Barnes they try uh, but like how much are you going to get back for him I don't know what they can do without getting rid of someone that's extremely valuable I love Kevin Herter there I love uh oh my God, I'm drawing a blank who's the 
uh, Keegan Murray. I love him. So I, I, they have assets. I just don't know if it's Who's a, this guy? Is that what he said? I love Keegan Murray. But they're not getting rid of him. No, but you're right. But that it does feel like, okay, well, we're just doing the same thing over and over again. It doesn't feel right. And the again. only thing in Sacramento now is, like, they have flexibility. They have, they have contracts that you can trade, like Harrison Barnes' contract. There are a few other deals. Kevin Herter's deal. Like, you can add those numbers up. You have draft picks now. You have some flexibility. And with Fox and Sabonis and Mike Brown, there's at least stability there that guys can look at in Sacramento. They've had the same regime over the last few years. That's the one positive saving grace you can look at in Sacramento. And, yeah, Malik Monk, that's the type of deal you have to pay him to retain your, ta your, your, your talent. You can't it, – it's hard to see if you're the Kings just allowing Malik Monk to leave. Right. It's hard to and replace that. Also, look, at the, the Blazers and the Jazz are the only teams that really aren't going to be much better, and that's depending on what they do this summer. So you look at the Memphis Grizzlies with John Rampack, they're going to be a lot True. better. Look at the rise of the San Antonio Spurs. Amen, sister. They're going to be a lot better. So there's so many good teams, girlfriend, <laughs> that uh, – it's going to be tough because I don't know what move they make that really actually gives them that bump up. Man, offseason's going to be stressful. Uh, Rockets, 41-41. and 41, mm -hmm. That was the finish. A 19-game improvement from the, the prior season. Uh, just outside the play-in game. They also jumped up to the number three pick in this draft. So their plans this offseason, Shams? The, the Rockets went after Mikhail Bridges last season. So they've already shown this desire to go get a top flight player at the wing position. But Jalen Green, the way he emerged in the second half of the season – Clearly, they have a burgeoning star in him. Alperin Sangoon, the numbers he put up. Mm. To me, the question is going to be, what type of extensions do you give both of them? Do you give them both max deals? Are they both Love. worthy of max deals? Do you look to trade one of them and go get a star player? That's the question in, in Houston. They're going to be active on the market, going to listen. But what they end up doing, obviously, it's either going to be paying these guys, either, either just shy of the max or maxes, or you have to trade one. And can they fit together? They were both were great when each other one. was out. Can they fit? Can they each do a little bit less to, for the sake of the team's success? So does it feel see. like they're good? Yeah, it feels weird to say both max players. Like, uh, doesn't feel like that's going to be the. the it's season. just if those are your two max players going into next season, I don't know how confident. It doesn't I have am. the pop that you're looking yeah. for, does it? Uh, taking a quick break. When we come back, a little more. I'll run it back. Ooh, yeah. blue. Run it up, run it nice. Back. Run it up. Run it back, yeah. run it all. Run it. Uh, tiene una familia. PJ Washington on Derek White. Oh, mm. Shams, get in See, here. See, that is Derek White said, I'm okay with getting no, dunked wait. on because he got this, <laughs> this one. They got him. When it mattered at the end of the game, he got them. Yes, look at us. Look at Were us. Were you more of a two foot bunnies or one foot? I had bunnies. Bunnies. Lou had a few. If I had a few back in, in my career, I think 98 of them were off one foot. I remember this like it was yesterday. Jalen uh, Brown's had a few like nasty dunks already this final. Yes, he has. And blocks. That, uh, yeah, Jalen Brown. Why don't we show one of those oh, right it. now? Oh, I called it. <laughs> oh, this is nasty. Yeah, this oh, is, this is, God, this he's is had some boy. moments in these two oh, games. Oh, dear. Oh, on, dear. Man. Oh, dear. Yeah, that's oh, nasty. That's embarrassing for everybody. That, I love that angle because you just see Lucas. You see Everybody Faith. got some of that one. Yeah. I will say we talk about how underrated, how disrespected he is. Now all of a sudden he's the best player on the best team in the NBA. See how quickly that turns? Uh, it never this turns. was a nasty dunk too. I know it was on Derek White, but damn. What's wrong with that? This is like the Whoa! one. Oh, this, this is the, the one, one successful got. pick and roll they had where they got to the rim. Good. And it looked like a blown play. And look, oh, he, had the, he had to dunk on somebody to get it. Tara. That was some power. Jalen Brown. This is just oh, the Jalen Brown show. Dad Come on, knows. Luca. Kleber, foul him. Do that was something. Last this is the one thing Jalen Brown does. As well, he, he doesn't maybe. mess. He doesn't mess with the ball. He just gets right <laughs> to it. He really is fast. He you know, but it's just right muscle memory. It. If I did that, I could probably like do it. Lordy, lordy. <laughs> All right. All right, that does it for us. Well, I'd say enjoy the games, like but yeah, see I, you I, tomorrow. I can dunk too. Muscle memory. I can dunk. <laughs> yeah, muscle memory. That's all it is. I muscle memory.